The new film, Miss Juneteenth, takes us to Texas and into the powerful world of black beauty pageants, following Turquoise, a single mother holding down the fort, trying to make sure her teenage daughter learns from her mistakes. Take a look. I'm gonna need some help. Her registration fees, and an extra $400. Just here for the registration. I put the extra on Kai's birthday cake. You want to come with me to get it? I'm going fishing with Catfish in the morning. I'm going to take her somewhere special on that day. And star of Miss Juneteenth, Kendrick Sampson, is here with us now. Kendrick, it is so good to see you. Thanks for joining me. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. You know, I love this film. It kind of made the festival circuit and it won critical acclaim at Sundance. You play Ronnie, uh, you play Kai's father, and Turquoise is kind of X, but X is a weird word in this scenario. So tell us about your character and kind of how you fit into this mother-daughter dynamic. Yeah, it does get complicated, uh, yeah. but it's her husband. They have a complicated relationship. Yeah. Uh, I love that it's not perfect and that, you know, that's what a lot of people's relationships are. And I know a lot of people like Ronnie who missed the mark, but you enjoy, you enjoy Ronnie, but then you're like, oh, Ronnie, just get it. Ronnie, get it together, Ronnie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're yeah. rooting for Ronnie, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, right. For everybody in this film. It was written and directed by Channing Godfrey Peoples. I can't believe it was her first film, um, but she grew up in Texas. She kind of had her own experience with this Miss Juneteenth pageant. How do you think her personal experience kind of helped tell this mother-daughter coming of age story like it hasn't been told before? Well, she grew up in Fort Worth, if I remember correctly, and there's a big Juneteenth pageant culture there. So I grew up in Houston, H-Town, yeah. uh, and outside of Houston as well in most city and not too far from Galveston where the last slaves were told that they were free three yeah. years after the Emancipation Proclamation, which is a travesty, but it's also like, you yeah. know, my favorite holiday because we know that there was a whole fight of abolitionists and, and black liberators that, that fought so hard, our ancestors, and we want to celebrate them and, and, yeah. and that they didn't settle with just a lot of us being free. They made sure every single person was free. You know, it's a day of healing. It's a day of like celebrating joy, mourning, being in community and healing together. That is a lot of emotion. That is a lot yeah. of emotion all right yeah. there. Wrapped in that. And what do you think like filming on location where this holiday began and just kind of I mean, the energy on set? It was good to have the energy of Texas around me. And, and Juneteenth is such an important holiday for me yeah. personally and for Texans um, and for Black folks. And, and to have just Black people around all the time in the community, she like actually incorporated people from the community in, in, into the movie. And it, it made it better. It made it more authentic, yeah. Yeah. You know, with all that's happening right now, how do you think a film like Miss Juneteenth and a story like Turquoise's kind of helps represent a broader look to the future? Because I think Black people are enraged in, 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 in America and uh, saying that we're not going back and this is not happening anymore. And people are taking up uh, the, the fight of, uh, you know, in the vein of those ancestors that were abolitionists that fought for um, a day like Juneteenth to come where everybody has dropped the shackles, we're, 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 we're picking up that fight. I feel like in the same way that Juneteenth is a story of delayed liberation, of the continued fight until everybody's free, that's kind of what Turquoise is going through too. Yeah, right? you just put that, you wrap that in like the perfect bow right there. Um, <laughs> and I see your passion and I know that you founded Build Power. It's in its third year. Tell us what you're working on and kind of the mission of Build Power. So we created Build Power to fight for freedom. So Build Power is looking to shift the culture of Hollywood to counter the oppression that Hollywood has perpetuated. Yeah. Well, there's also, there's a lot of resources on the website too, including a lot for mental health issues. How important is it to take care of ourselves mentally during this time? Well, you know, that's my, my number one passion. You know, I, I'm glad you brought that up on Build Power website. We worked really hard on that, a mental health resources page for people to find, you know, affordable or free or, um, or different types of therapy. It's, it's important now more than ever to be kind to ourselves, to make yeah. sure it's okay to not be okay, 
and yeah. to really strive for fighting for each other's liberation mentally, spiritually, um, and to be in the in, in community in whatever way we possibly can. It's still a way to support each other. You know, I just I, I know we don't have a ton of time, but I really want to just touch on insecure for a second. We got to talk about insecure for just a second. Um, so you know, there's a big debate going on online okay. on whether or not Issa should end up with Nathan or Lawrence. You know, Nate, obviously you played Nathan, um, and Nathan turned <laughs> out to be a much more complex character this past season. Yeah. Um, so, did you know Nathan's backstory this whole time, or did you sit in with the writers and kind of help develop his arc a little bit? A few episodes in last season, they were like, "By the way, <laughs> we uh, forgot to tell you." Um, <laughs> this might come up, right? I love that they addressed this. Yeah. And, and, and I got a little bit of input, I think, between, you know, I just told them what I'm passionate about. But I was really grateful that they even s sought out my input, but they knew how passionate I was about it. Yeah. Um, I know that Issa said that she's going to take everybody to a place that they haven't been to before in season five. Anything you want to tell us about that? Do you know what's happening in season five? Not even a nope. little bit. Not <laughs> even a little bit. <laughs> All right, well, we'll be looking forward to that. Uh, Kendrick, thank you so much for taking the time today. I love the film. I want everyone to watch it. Miss Juneteenth is on digital and on demand. So again, Kendrick, thanks so much. And be well. I'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.